No, the answer is no. We're back with The Blaze. I am your boy with the facts. And this video is brought to you by mwah, the fine people over at Magellan TV. What is Magellan TV? Well, it's a place you can watch things online. It's like Netflix, but for big brains. That's not the talking points. Uh, discover a new type of documentary film experience. Oh, come on. That is like Netflix for big brains, isn't it? Uh, Magellan TV and its binge-worthy documentaries updated every week. More on them in a bit. Welcome. Uh, if you're new here, what happened? Just get my balance. What happens here is Danny is going to write a script. He's already written it. I'm going to read the script and then Sam is going to sprinkle in some fine vintage memes. This is Bizarre Conspiracy Theories, Escape from the Matrix. Danny, I'm not sure what is going on. Every time I'm like, please try to make them shorter. My legs get so tired. And here we are with a script that is literally 10 pages long and weighs like a small book. I don't know why, but the longer videos always do better on this channel. So while my legs hate it, my bank account does enjoy it because longer videos get more views and that means more money for your boy. Woo! Everyone wins. I do kind of feel like I'm in a business where everyone wins. I mean, I make content that I hope is a little bit entertaining. You guys watch it and have a good time. There are advertisements I get. Everyone wins. It's fantastic. You know, there's so many businesses where it's like, you know, ah, oh, it's basically, it's a pyramid scheme. Let's not name any of the companies, but it's like a pyramid scheme and you're basically ripping off your friends. I feel like that's the opposite, where it's like, it's just shitty and you don't end up making any money. But like, pyramid schemes, right? Let's get into it. Last night, I had a dream. That one day. I can really, I can't really remember what it was about now. I've had two cups of Death Wish coffee and a couple of buttered crumpets since then. Danny, how are you ever going to sleep again if you have two cups of that stuff? But I only mention it today as it's quite relevant to my growing and quite alarming suspicion that everything we think we know is complete rubbish. I don't normally go in for wild and bizarre theories very much, but I admit that I'm fascinated by the concept that we're living in some sort of simulated reality. This is a super interesting one. I'm vaguely familiar with this because it's like, okay, if we're at, if you can imagine, right, that we're as a species at a stage where we can like simulate a lot of stuff, like we're like simulating rat brains and stuff and synapses and all of that junk. It's like, it's not, and, and 50 years ago, we barely had computers. It's not insane to think that in 50 years, we're gonna be able to simulate some really insane shit, like people's brains and like whole universes. So what makes us think we're first? And it's like, if we're not, you know, if we accept that it's going to be possible for us to simulate entire planets like this one, which I think, of course, it is going to be possible. That is, the, like, why are we first? We're probably not first. It'd be weird if we were first. This is complicated. Uh, not necessarily in the way usually depicted in films, such as 1999's The Matrix, but I thought, yeah, that's not real. We're not in The Matrix like that. But I often experience the lingering feeling that we're not necessarily in base reality, and that we're inside something else rather than outside in the real world. Well, Danny, I don't feel that because the simulation is really perfect. I, I just accept the possibility that we might be in one. It's just really extremely realistic. And even if it wasn't realistic, we wouldn't have anything else to base our perception of realism on. So it doesn't really matter. This is all very complicated. I am not big brain enough to truly understand this stuff. I thought perhaps you knew. No. Not this. And I think the dreams provide some interesting insight into how easy we find it to snap out of a perceived reality. The duration of a dream briefly becomes our enti the entirety of our existence. We don't usually stop to consider the bizarre notion of a world outside the dream. It's only when we wake up that we quickly realize that we're just spending time in our own heads. And it's not like we spend hours marveling at how we appear to have jumped from one perception of reality to another. And we've usually largely dismissed the dream by the time we get in the shower. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it's not that surprising though, is it? really the more the more surprising thing i find is that just it's, everyone's just totally okay with the fact that eight hours are like a third of our lives for one third of a day we just get into a bed and we're like unconscious it's like basically i see it as kind of a preview of death like dreamless sleep is like a little death preview that you get every single day and it's sort of terrifying <laughs> i'm not trying to say that life is just a dream but it's not inconceivable that one day we could step out of everything we currently know and quickly dismiss our entire lifetime as meaningless and irre irrelevant piffle by the time we get into the real shower getting deep of course it's just an intriguing theory which has been tossed around for centuries and it is quite difficult to prove one way or the other the most popular modern take on simulation theory is the simulation hypothesis put forward by philosopher Nick Bostrom from Oxford University. 
which Danny calls the Oxford University, <laughs> la -dee -da, in 2003. Nick argues that our own technological developments are leading to an age in which super detailed emulations of real life will become possible, and it's perfectly plausible that we are not the original race, but rather simulations of life, of life created by advanced descendants of the original race. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying, just expressed in a way that a guy from Oxford would do it rather than a guy on the internet. Well done, Nick. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. We can only speculate about the motives, but the project could have been designed to research their own evolutionary history, or it could be some kind of scientific modeling exercise to assess the most likely outcome or solution to a pressing problem. It might not even be particularly important in the grand scheme of things. We could all just be living in a school science project clumsily, clumsily designed by Spotty Jenkins from Year 10, who wasn't really concentrating on what he was doing and made a bit of a pig's ear of the whole thing, hence the ridiculously unlikely recent sequence of Brexit, Trump winning the American presidential election and business blaze gaining a quarter of a million subscribers it is pretty insane isn't it i'm always like because i've got other channels that have more subscribers but then i'm like a quarter of a million people have actively chosen to watch this thank you you f***ing legends it would certainly help account for any odd experiences as we can put them all down to a glitch in the matrix or a botched rewriting of the code for example the largely unexplained sense of deja vu could potentially be a rare glimpse outside the program or an accidental reminder from a previous simulation or it could just be your brain being a bit silly i mean that's what i'm inclined to believe every time i have deja vu every goddamn time i'm like no i definitely this time it's different i had a dream about this every goddamn time and then 10 seconds later i'm like nah of course it's deja vu it's like when you feel like this every time but it is how it is interesting how dumb we are or there's the mandela effect in which it's claimed that thousands of people share a vivid memory of the reported death of in prison of south african anti-apartheid leader nelson mandela during the 1980s despite the fact that he went on to serve as president in the 1990s and died in 2010. this has proved uh, provoked speculation that our great creator or spotty jenkins is rewriting our history or recoding our memories but not always getting it entirely right i know there are some perfectly plausible explanations for this shocking such as say social reinforcement or false memories but i have to say that i feel convinced i can remember the uk comedian and radio personality roy hud dying three times over the course of my own life so i have no idea who roy hud is i can vividly recall hearing the news that it died for a second time and remarking to a friend that i felt sure that it already died about five years earlier when he later died for a third time i felt incredulous that nobody else has seemed to notice the bizarre phenomenon that i like to call the roy hud effect is this real danny who is this guy and why do you think he's died so many times i've just had to stop writing to check on wikipedia that he was still dead because i wouldn't put it past him to spring back to life any moment <laughs> what is going on elon musk is just one high profile supporter of simulation hypothesis as he believes that as we get closer to creating our own convincing simulations of reality it becomes ever more statistically unlikely that we ourselves are the original race yeah i mean i get it like this kind of makes sense. In fact, Elon Musk reckons that the odds of us living in a base reality are billions to one, which makes you wonder what exactly he's hoping to find on Mars. Perhaps he's convinced that there's a cheat code hiding up there. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, even if we are living in a simulation, it literally doesn't matter because that's all we know. It would be like a cat being concerned about the goings on in Australia, if it, I mean, assuming it didn't live in Australia. It's like, it's so far outside of its world but it, it doesn't matter. We might as well just make the most of it. Three words for you. Treat, yo, sell. Or just, or just give up. I mean, either way, it doesn't make a difference. Carry on. We may never discover the truth one way or the other. I would imagine that even Spotty Jenkins would be smart enough to ensure that the rules of the program don't allow the simulants to prove that they're living in a simulation, otherwise the whole thing would just go tits up. I don't know, I don't think, maybe we will we be able to prove it. Weren't they looking at some like really, like quarks and gluons and all of that really small stuff and finding that it was kind of like binary or something there was something super weird going on uh, and people become more convinced they're living in a simulation which is super weird so all the pseudoscience that we picked up over the centuries i.e everything is designed to block people from uncovering the truth and escaping the simulation it does make you wonder how many more layers of the universal onion they need to peel away before finding base reality if we ourselves end up with the technology to create a simulated reality then wouldn't it be the case of a simulated world creating another simulated world in which case could it be that our creators are just as simulated as we are yes in fact i would see 
it's as highly likely. It's quite weird to consider that we could be living in a program within a program within a program multiplied by 100 quadrillion. Or more. Bearing all that in mind, I suppose it's not really worth worrying too much about, and we might as well just crack on figuring out uh, how to cure hiccups in our own reality. Yes, let's bring it back and just ground it in the problem of hiccups, because otherwise, I mean, I'm already feeling a little bit of existential dread right now from all of this shit, so it's like, ah! But it's just one example of a wacky conspiracy theory, which is at least relatively harmless, isn't it, trying to mislead people down a potentially dangerous path, apart from maybe madness and the horror horror of existential dread. As it and it turns out that there are loads of them, if what we've been led to believe is true, which frankly I doubt. Danny, that was the introduction? What is going on? Danny, what the fuck, man? The fiction of Finland. Oh, this is so dumb. People don't believe Finland's real. Oh, by the way, everyone in the comments on this one is going to be like, Simon, actually, there's quite a lot of evidence for the Finland not being a real country thing. Because any time, like, I'll do a video on 5G causing COVID, which it obviously doesn't, and people will be like, oh, Simon, have you looked into this study? Have you considered, considered this? And it's like, yes. Yes, I just, I did consider that, but it turns out I'm not a idiot. Most countries around the globe usually come packaged with fun, famous facts that everyone knows. For example, the UK is celebrated for its mild and wet weather. Celebrated. Uh, the French eat snails. The US are rubbish at soccer. And also, why would they care? Nigeria is in just an entire kingdom of princes, and the Soviet Union invented the theremin. Wow, brilliant! But it's harder to come up with the fun facts about Finland. A quick search on Google tells me that Finland is the happiest country in the world because they've got all of their shit sorted out. And maybe that alone should raise alarms that Finland doesn't actually exist. The idea first gained traction from a Reddit thread in 2016, which encouraged users to share the most ridiculous things that were taught to them by their parents. A 22-year-old bloke called Jack revealed how his own parents happily confided him in, the, him in him at the age of nine that Finland was an entirely fictional place. It's amazing. Like, as a parent, you can tell your kid anything and they will just believe you. It is such... They have just such trust and you can just betray it like that for the sake of a joke. And it's... I, I love it. <laughs> and that kid, if they're not told otherwise, just never bring it up again. Someone will mention Finland later down their life and be like, you know that's not real. And the, and the other person would be like, what are you talking about? Finland is real. I'll show it to you on a map. And that kid will have their f***ing mind blown. And although Jack is old enough to know better now, his parents appeared to be utterly convinced at the time. As were the, Wait, they actually believed this? They weren't just f***ing with Jack? What is going on? As were thousands of internet users, he began to chew over this new theory and consider that, it might, that there might just be something to it. Apparently, the creation of Finland was a mid-20th century conspiracy theory between the Soviet Union and Japan to secure fishing rights over a stretch, a secret stretch of the Baltic Sea between the Soviet Union and Sweden. Yeah, because uh, fishing rights is, uh, is enough of a motivation to create a giant global country spanning conspiracy. The rest of the world were hardly likely to complain about the violation of fishing rights if they believed there was a proper landmass there. So the two nations invented a fictional landmass which they christened Finland. Japan were given free reign to fish as much as they liked in these hidden waters without any hairy eco-warriors getting in the way and the fish would be shipped back to Japan via the Trans-Siberian Railway which was built specifically for this purpose. Ah, conspiracy theorists, or, you know, Occam's razor guys, usually it's the simplest explanation explanation like 9-11 well what happens was it was a really complicated government plot they put explosives in the buildings and then they did this and they did that and there were fires and it's like then they simulated these planes flying into it's like or or it's a really tall building and a f***ing giant ass plane crashes into it and it fell down i mean what if this i mean if you look into it if you look at it at the surface level obviously it's the latter if you look into it at a deeper level Obviously, it's the latter. Smash that dislike button. Feel free to spout off in the comments below, you fucking wackos. The clues are there if you look hard enough, not on a map. Obviously, maps are just tissues of lies. But for starters, Finland isn't a popular tourist spot, so not many people can vouch for its existence. And the thousands of people who do believe they visited, along with the 5.5 million citizens living under the delusion that they're Finnish, have actually been wandering around small towns and remote forested areas of Sweden, northern Estonia, and western Russia. Perhaps the only famous corporation to have emerged from Finland is Nokia, and the fish smuggled through the Trans-Siberian Railway to Japan travels under the cunning disguise of Nokia products. What is going on? What is going on? This explains why Japan appears on paper to be the largest importer of Nokia products, even though not many people in the country appear to, d appear to use them. Not many people in any country use them.
use Nokia products. It's Nokia. The last time it was popular was 1996. That's not true. It was popular for a while after its exaggeration. Even the name Finland is a big, fishy clue. Although this could actually be a red herring, as the Finnish name for the country is Suomi. Uh, but then, of course, the Finnish don't exist, so what would they bloody know? It's highly unlikely that the governments of other countries would have ever cottoned onto the conspiracy, but they've apparently agreed for the greater good that the Finland's myth should be allowed to continue and held up to the rest of the world as a model country with excellent free education, healthcare, gender equality, freedom of the press, no corruption, and deliriously happy citizens. I think people are just jealous. They're like, look, Finland's better than us. It's not real. It's not real. No one's better than us. We're the best. Number one! Perhaps the idea of the whole world agreeing to keep a secret for the greater good might be just a stretch too far, though. Yes, it is. I mean, it's just too many people to keep it quiet. Not to mention 5.5 million people live in the country of Finland. If we were being picky, we could point out that you can damn well see the landmass of Finland from any aeroplane or satellite image, and that it would appear that it would be impossible to trick millions of people into believing they're actually living in a fictional country, and that surely just one airplane pilot pretending to fly there would have spilled the beans at some point over the last 80 years or so. Yes! I still think it's weird that Finland hasn't yet spawned a single famous person in history, though. The, history the theory would probably sink faster if they could just come up with a Finnish version of David Hasselhoff. Let's not do that. There's one David Hasselhoff is, is enough. We don't need more. We definitely don't need more. This video is brought to you by the absolute legends over at Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming service. It's uh, created by big brains for other big brains. Look, I mean, you could watch Netflix and it's all good to, you know, I haven't seen it, but like I hear The Crown is very popular. That's great. I mean, and you learn like a semi-fictionalized story about British royalty and, and something like blah, blah, blah. Who cares? If you actually want to learn something that is actual, you know, complete facts and not facts with a lot of fabrication, you should definitely check out Magellan TV because they've got a lot of fantastic fact stuff on there for you big brains. I think they say it's like Netflix, except it's designed by your favorite history professor, which I think is a fairly apt description. The only thing is like, I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll expand my big brain with some like uh, Magellan TV. TV documentaries about something smart and then it's like oh another documentary about North Korea huh <laughs> another documentary about murderous dictators well, that sounds like it's right up my street so I end up watching those instead and another great thing Magellan TV there are no ads you you pay for it obviously although you guys can definitely get it for free right yeah you get a month for free to try it out you'll find it's worthwhile it's also extremely affordable so if you're looking for more than 3,000 4k explorations by the way 4k is nice. 4K looks tight, as I've said previously. Uh, with new content being added every single week, then you should consider Magellan TV. It can, it's it's going to be an amazing addition to your streaming lineup. Look, I already know, you've got Netflix already. You don't need me to tell you about Netflix, you know it already. You can get Magellan TV, add it there. So when you're on your TV at night and you're like, oh yeah, I can fire up Netflix, or, or maybe it's time for me to activate my big brain, I'll fire up Magellan TV and find something fantastic to watch. That's Magellan. There is a link below. Mwah. I'd love it if you guys went and got that and support the show. Let's get back to it. Paul is dead, but the Beatles never existed. The Paul is dead theory might be one of the world's most famous hoaxes relating to a conspiracy celebrity death right up there with Elvis is alive. Neither of these things are true. Why are people so dumb? It's funny how whatever we're told about the vital status of a well-known figure, some people will automatically assume that the exact opposite is true. In the case of former Beatle Paul McCartney, the legend goes that on the night of the 9th of November, 19 66, Paul had an argument with the rest of the band in the recording studio and angrily drove off in a huff only to crash his vehicle on the M1 and get decapitated. What is going on? That never happens. No, does it, was Paul McCartney the one who was, no, that was John Lennon. Is Paul McCartney still alive? You know, he must be old. Maybe the rest of the band wanted to spare their fans from going through the grief, or maybe they just thought this might be bad for future record sales. But whatever the motive, they replaced him with a lookalike whose real name was Billy Shears, who gets a name check in Sandra Bleber's title track and carried on hoping that nobody would notice. But then they became racked with feelings of guilt for deceiving their fans, so they began leaving hidden lyrical and visual clues to the true fate of the real Paul McCartney across their later album releases. No, this makes no sense. They'd just say, they'd come forward. Like, why would you like leave secret clues? That no one's leaving secret clues. Just, we're gonna hear these secret clues. And you're gonna be initially like, oh, that does sound interesting, doesn't it? I mean, that could be, could be. But then there's gonna be a rational explanation because there always is. No! 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 I know that this is the problem. The reality is, life is incredibly boring. Like, you might think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if there's a big conspiracy. The government's in on it. And the reality is, nah, it's just like it is. And it's boring. Just always assume 
if it's too interesting, it's false. Okay? I accept for business plays. Extremely interesting, always true. The theory erupted in popularity after a Detroit DJ received an on-air call from a mysterious fan in 1969 who pointed out some of the more compelling clues. For example, the line from A Day in the Life which goes, He blew his mind out in a car, is meant to be a reference to Paul's death. The track Norwegian Wood got its name from the material uh, from which 84% of English coffins were produced at the time. <laughs> Why let's stretch it! Uh, if you play the track Here Comes the Sun Backwards at 78 RPM, you can hear George Harrison singing Woe is Paul. I know I said that they're gonna be easily explainable, but I mean, these are the most ridiculous stretches that I've ever heard in all my life. At the end of the track I'm So Tired, you can hear John Lennon singing Paul is dead, miss him, miss him. But again, only if you play it backwards. You I bet if you do it, I, or someone will tell. If you listen to it without someone telling you it, and you didn't know the story, you'd never hear it. As soon as someone tells you, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, it is there a little bit." Like uh, another one bites the dust. Psh, psh, psh. If you play that backwards, doesn't it say something? But only if someone only if someone points it out to you. Uh, While well, at the end of Strawberry Fields Forever, you can apparently hear John revealing, "I buried Paul." Although what he's actually saying there is cranberry sauce, which does sound a bit similar. I buried Paul, cranberry sauce, sure, okay. I suspect that if you play Octopus Garden backwards at 78 RPM on an upside down record player with the volume turned down, you hear a thousand scraps of evidence if you try hard enough. Oh, you will, for sure. Most famously of all, there's the cover to the 1969 album Abbey Road, in which the Fab Four are seen navigating the way across the pedestrian crossing in what is allegedly a funeral procession. Lennon dressed in white as the heavenly figure, Ringo Starr dressed in black as the undertaker, Scruffy George dressed in denim as the grave digger, while a barefoot, out of step Paul McCartney, portrayed by Billy Shears, obviously, uh, is the corpse. A further clue is the right-handed Paul McCartney is holding a cigarette in his left hand, signaling that he's clearly an imposter. Yeah, because you'd never hold a cigarette in your left hand if you're right-handed, would you? Would you? Ever? What is going on? This is such bullshit. Please stop. I actually found that the last bit quite interesting until I just experienced a mind-blowing revelation that as a right-handed smoker myself, I usually hold my cigarette in my left hand as it feels more natural. I'm not sure it really matters too much either way, but I never realized this until today. The problem is that these wild theories were given a little more credibility by the fact that Paul had gone strangely quiet anyway. After spending years under the harsh media spotlight, the bands have long since given up touring and largely shied away from publicity during their final months. Feeling increasingly isolated from his bandmates and convinced that the end was nigh, Paul was spending time in seclusion and Scottish farm with his veggie sausage munching wife Linda. When Life magazine eventually tracked him down to ask if he was really dead, Paul's initial response was to swear at the reporters and throw a bucket of water over them, although he did eventually agree to an exclusive cover story and interview which would finally lay the death rumors to rest. Quite incredibly, Paul remarked at one point in the interview, the Beatles thing is over, casually tossing over the world exclusive news to Life magazine that the biggest band of all time was splitting out. Is that true? That's intense. The guy reporting on that life story must just be like, my dude, if that is true, you just made my career. <laughs> and they completely overlooked it because they were too busy examining his chin and the size of his ears to check that he wasn't just a lookalike. Life magazine, no! But speaking of ears and chins, a more recent and even wilder theory is that the Beatles never really existed in the first place. <laughs> What about all the music? In 2011, the website thebeatlesneverexisted.com, the source of all facts related to the Beatles never existing. I mean, I like a bit like 5G causes COVID.com probably exists. And, uh, but it doesn't mean it has any authority just because it bought a domain name. Which sadly no longer exists, probably because it's been taken down by the fascist Illuminati. And they put forward a comprehensive range of heart hitting photographic evidence that the Beatles were actually a revolving cast of almost identical actors, or perhaps even clones. I'm just... Clones. CLONES! The theory is based on a suggestion that it would have been physically impossible for the same four people to record such a vast appetite of material while touring and meet an endless series of social media obligations all in such a short window of time. That's probably where the clone rumors about me kick off. But I tell you, it's not that hard. You just have a schedule and you do a lot of stuff and there's a lot of people helping you. It's not that complicated. Own the only people who think it's impossible are people who are too lazy to even comprehend doing large quantities of work. It's true that the Beatles were almost mind-bogglingly prolific in the writing and recording of a vast capsule. I'm not comparing myself to the Beatles, by the way, just to make that clear. The Beatles are actually talented. I am just fact boy. A vast catalogue of groundbreaking material. It's certainly not groundbreaking. But I don't think the answer lies in the fact that they sometimes look slightly different in photographs taken over a passage of time. The website claims that there were at least three John Lennons 
of varying nose shapes with at least 12 Paul McCartneys, good lord. Some of whom could raise their eyebrows higher than the others while a couple of them were significantly shorter. You know what else humans could do? We can raise our eyebrows to different levels at different times, like half height, full height, half height, narrow. It's not complicated. While a couple of them were significantly shorter, although this might just said something to do with Paul's posture in the photographs. Yeah, look, tall, relaxed, hunched. <laughs> Fuck you, science! Uh, much is also made of the varying states of Paul's teeth over the years, which seem to fluctuate wildly from gleaming white and perfect to chipped and crooked, but this could be put down to a motorcycle accident in 1966 in which his teeth were pretty badly smashed up, and it was quite a while before he got dental treatment. Uh, having said all of this, I got no evidence to debunk the growing theory that there are at least 12 Simon Whistlers on YouTube, and only two of them know how to pronounce Tintagel. I'm not sure if I'm one of them, because I don't know how to pronounce Tintagel. I'm just guessing every time. I think it's Tintagel. Tintar gel? Tint, tint, no one cares. Uh, just one final word on the Paul is dead theory, though. While he may not have been decapitated on November the 9th, 1966, I feel at least a tiny part of the Beatles may have died on that fateful night. Uh, it was the exact same date that John Lennon met Yoko Ono. Ah, coincidence? Question mark. That is not a coincidence. Let it snow. Wish I could jump in there and roll around and all that cascading white powder. God, I love cocaine. Question everything, even snow. Oh no, what are we doing? Weren't people like thinking the Texas snow was fake because they were setting it alight? They were like heating it with a lighter and like it was burning or like burning, but really it was obviously just the soot from the lighter on the snow. People are so dumb. It's really remarkable. Oh, you are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. Um, back in January 2014, the Gulf Coast was paralyzed by a massive snowstorm which resulted in rolling blackouts, power outages, damage to the water infrastructure, 180 injuries, and at least two deaths. But as the citizens of Georgia were the first to discover, the most annoying thing about this destructive snowstorm is that the snow wasn't even real. So that was a fucking lie. At some point, a local resident tried burning a snowball with a lighter. Oh, people have been doing this for ages, apparently. I'm not sure why he's trying to do this, but let's not worry about that for now. The point is that this fake government snow didn't even melt when it was exposed to the flame of the lighter. It just burns and left a black streak on the snowball. The revelation was swiftly followed up by several revealing TikTok videos. Wait, did you say this was in 2014? TikTok wasn't around in 2014. 2014. What is going on? It's got to be January 2021. Danny, I'm so confused. Uh, the revelation was swiftly followed up by several TikTok videos, which naturally went viral, often with the compelling captions along the lines of, this needs some explaining, and anyone played with the government-generated snow yet? My favorite TikTok video shows a Georgia woman burning another pile of snow to the color of soot while defiantly exclaiming, <laughs> so Bill Gates is his name here. Thank you, Bill Gates, for trying to f***ing trick us that this is real snow. You'll see it's not melting, and it's not going to burn. Snow doesn't burn. Snow f***ing melts. I put this in the microwave. It's going to start sparking because there's metal mixed in it. Poor old Bill seems to cut the blame for everything. Yeah, I mean, he does, doesn't he? What the fuck, people? What are you talking about? Also, how dumb are these... Like, what? when when the snow actually melts, maybe it's even melted by now, because it's Texas, it's, it's warm. What are you going to be like? It's not entirely clear why the government wanted to orchestrate a fake snowstorm. It probably had something to do with 5G or chemtrails or DNA-altering nanobots or whatever. But what the good people of Georgia didn't seem to grasp is that snow always turns black when you hold a lighter to it. The snowball absorbs most of, the, most of the water created by the heat, eventually turning the whole thing into slush, while the black streaks are caused by the butane in the actual lighter. Shocking that there's a reasonable explanation for this. Mm? Still, it wouldn't be the first time that the US has, tried to tar has been the target for fake snow. You only have to look at Disney's failed town of celebration for evidence of that, and that wouldn't be the only time that Walt Disney's good name would be embroiled in a particularly flaky conspiracy theory. Also, if the government was going to carpet the place with fake snow, I mean, surely the easiest... Why is the reason reason for this there's no there's no like oh it's because of this it's just like it's fake we don't know why but it is it's not it's not F clout chasing tiktok fools frozen heads the other day i was wandering through the lower levels of the basement in search of a half decent corkscrew what would you be unscrewing danny i haven't left a have you got into my wine collection Gotta tighten Danny's chains. When I stumbled across Simon's secret cryogenic chamber. Danny, those doors are out for a reason! Although the temperature was a bit chilly, my heart was actually quite warmed by the sight of three separate cryogenic cylinders. 
I know that Simon is determined to live forever, but I had no idea that he'd made plans to put two more of us on ice until a cure for mortality is discovered. Maybe he was planning this nice surprise for us after we'd died. <laughs> Dream on, Danny. Uh, my heart sank a bit when I saw that the three names on the cylinders were Simon, Sam, and I don't know, either ETA or a future pet rabbit or something. Oh, I'm sorry, Danny. You shouldn't have broken into my wine collection. But this reminds me of the alleged origins of Disney's 2013 film Frozen, which I always thought was inspired purely by the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, The Snow Queen. Never seen it, never read that book, don't know anything about it. But could the whole- Yes, I just, I did consider that, but it turns out I'm not a f***ing idiot. Reading about Walt Disney's big frozen head. No, the answer is no. No, no, no. Do we really have to continue? Do we really have to continue? Walt Disney died from complications of lung cancer in 1966. Do we have to say complications of lung cancer? Isn't it just like what killed it? Lung cancer. It wasn't like, well, yeah, eventually his organs failed because he had complications from lung cancer. So, lung cancer. It, it was lung cancer. And ever since then, rumors have run deep that his body, or maybe even just his head, had been placed into chronic suspension until mankind reaches the point where we can bring him back to life and he can finally get around to producing the long-awaited Snow White 2, Assignment Miami Beach. It's often alleged that his deep freezer burial spot is located directly beneath the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland, because of course the f***ing is. The rumors first started in 1967 when a reporter for the National Spotlight claimed that he had disguised himself as an orderly and snuck into the actual storage room where he saw with his own eyes the body of a dead Walt Disney suspended in a cryonic, cryogenic metal chamber. You are not a reporter, my friend. You are a hack. Others have claimed that Disney was also was fascinated with cryonics and the concept of living forever, while suspicion was also raised when Disney's funeral turned out to be a private affair and the burial plot was not initially disclosed. Of course, while Disney's funeral arrangements are nobody's damn business, fully agree, everyone could f*** off. For the record, the signed legal documents show that his body was cremated and his remains are buried at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Meanwhile, his daughter Diane claims that there is no truth to the story and doubts that her father had ever heard of cryonics. But it's alleged that the Disney company didn't like the idea of people searching Google for information on the theory. At one point, when he typed in Walt Disney into Google, the top autocomplete was <laughs> option was Walt Disney frozen head. <laughs> people are dumb. People are so dumb. Please stop. So the new theory goes that Disney named the 2013 film Frozen purely to mess around with Google's algorithm and divert people away from information relating to the supposed chronic suspension of the founder of the company. I mean, okay, I kind of get that. That is like based in a tiny bit of plausibility that they didn't want people searching for Walt Disney's frozen head just because there was a conspiracy theory about it and they didn't want people like, I get that. That is believable. The fact that there people are like Disney froze his head, but there's no f***ing evidence to support that whatsoever except one hack reporter who lied, allegedly. Maybe they're just trying to stop people from getting ideas about breaking into the ice tomb of their eternal lord and master buried underneath that Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Bearing in mind that the story was inspired by the Snow Queen, it does seem a bit weird that they didn't just call it, say, the Snow Queen. But I suppose Frozen sounds a lot cooler. Yes, and cool is what you have to think about when naming movies because that's how people decide on whether, oh, it's one of the reasons people decide on whether to see movies or not. Interesting, isn't it, that there is a rational explanation for these things, once again. It seems a tad unlikely that Disney would go to such lengths to try and bury the alleged truth even deeper underground, but the rumors are hardly going to melt away forever. You know what some conspiracy theories are like? They just won't let it go, let it go. But a bum bum this has been an episode of Business Blaze. As always, I have been your boy with the blaze. This episode was brought to you by the fine folks and the big brains over at Magellan, helping you to get a big brain as well. There is a link below. You get a month for free. Thank you for watching. Yes, I just I did consider that, but it turns out I'm not a f***ing idiot.